Hi everyone, how's it going? I am going to talk today about the Amazfit GTR, which is the newest Amazfit smartwatch to be announced and released. Now, I know I'm a bit late to the punch for this smartwatch. There have already been people using it and reviewing it, and I am going to say right now that I have not got the watch with me. I am getting it. It's in the mail. It's in being delivered to me, but I haven't got it right now. This video is basically just going to be like my first impressions of the watch, considering the fact that I've owned every other Amazfit smartwatch. I have a pretty good idea of what they can do, and and I'm gonna have a look at the specs, tell you what I think, whether I think it's worth, I mean, taking a good look at, whether I think it's worth buying even before I've got it. So yeah, do not troll me, do not have a go at me for the fact I've not got the watch, I never said that I did. This is just looking at the specs, this is just looking at what I think compared to the other smartwatches I've owned. So yeah, let's get going. So the Amazfit GTR looks set to replace the Amazfit Stratos or the Amazfit Verge as the flagship Amazfit smartwatch. Now it's going to come in two versions, one's 47 millimeters and one is 42 millimeters. Both watches will have an AMOLED display, the larger watch will have a 1.39 inch screen and the smaller will have a 1.2 inch screen. The larger watch will have a higher resolution of 454 by 454 and the smaller watch will have a resolution of 390 by 390. Now the main selling point of both of these watches, the thing that everyone's been kind of freaking out about, is not the screen, not even anything to do with any kind of smartwatch capabilities, but it's the battery life. Both of these watches have a very, very impressive battery life of up to 72 days if you really want to push it. But if you're going to use it normally like you would any other normal smartwatch, you're probably going to get around about 24 days out of it in a single charge. Now that's with the larger watch with the larger battery. The 42 millimeter version will have a less impressive battery life, but still up to 12 days on a standard use and expanding all the way up to around about 40 days if you conserve the battery life. Now this is, I think, a really impressive feature and it's probably the one reason I would get this watch because I hate, well, if you've seen any other of my other videos, I really hate charging things on a daily basis. Even every few days annoys me. I mean, I've just got some wireless earphones and I have to charge them every day and I am sick of it. So I like long battery life devices and this is a really good example of what can be achieved. So it looks to me like the Amazfit GTR is a combination of the Amazfit BIP, which also had a really impressive battery life, but not very many smartwatchy features and a very poor screen. And the Amazfit Verge, which has a decent screen, very impressive screen and some decent smartwatch capabilities, but not a very impressive battery life. Now as for other features, both will be waterproof, both will have GPS and GLONASS, and both will feature NFC. Now where the disappointment comes in for me is the fact that neither of these smartwatches will have a microphone or speaker. Now this is basically a downgrade from the Amazfit Verge, which does have both of those features, which allows you to make calls, take calls, dictate messages, use Google Assist like voice assisting features. Uh, you won't be able to do that with the Amazfit GTR because it doesn't have a microphone. You can't speak into it, it will not listen to you. And it doesn't have a loudspeaker, so you cannot take calls straight from the watch. You will have to go to your phone. Now as for other kind of smart watchy capabilities, this is not really a true smart watch in the sense of the same as an Apple watch or a Samsung watch. It's it's not going to have full access to the app stores that they have, but it will have inbuilt features such as a heart rate monitor. It will be able to track your heart rate. And I think it's one of the more advanced heart rate monitors that have come out. It will also have built in sports features, sports tracking. So be able to track, I guess, running, cycling, swimming, all that kind of stuff. You'll be able to set it and it will do that automatically. Very much, again, a sports tracking watch rather than a full smartwatch. As for which one I would choose, I would definitely go for the larger version because the features seem to be more advanced. For example, the heart rate monitor is better in the larger version. The materials are better. The screen is bigger, more, more clarity, higher resolution. You may as well pay that little bit extra or go for the larger watch, I think. I'm not sure why they released two versions, but hey, I mean, the smaller one will be cheaper. So if you're on a budget, I guess that's an option for you. Now, there are so many Amazfit smartwatches out now. I'm not sure why they keep releasing them like every few months, basically. It's hard for anyone to keep track of all the features, all the specs, and basically choose which one is best for you. To be honest, I own all of them and I still have to remind myself which, what does each thing, what, what specs each one has. So I imagine for you, it's very difficult. Thankfully, when I was Googling information about this watch, I came across a very handy table that someone has created. I'm not sure who it is, whoever it is, I mean, if you see this video or you know who made it, um, I will happily credit you. But this table shows all the Amazfit smartwatches, including the two new GTRs uh, side by side, all the specs, so you get to see what uh, each one can do. And I will post a link below to where you can view that so you can compare all of the Amazfit smartwatches side by side, including these two new ones. Now, just looking at this specs table, it's not really clear which one is the best. 
some have different features i mean this clearly is going to be the most modern one it's going to probably have the best screen and it's probably going to have the best tracking features in terms of the heart rate monitor and all that kind of stuff however it doesn't like i say have the microphone or the speaker so if you wanted that kind of full smartwatch experience where you can use your smartwatch as kind of like a phone the Amazfit Verge seems to be the better option. Um, but like I said, I haven't got the watch right now. I'm, if you're expecting that, I'm sorry, but I am just I'm waiting for it to be delivered. Uh, then I will do a full review as per usual. I'm just giving you my opinion based on the specs. I hope I've earned some people's trust. I'm generally quite honest, and a lot of YouTubers aren't. They just want to sell the device. From what I can see, just from my first impressions, it looks like it's going to be a fairly decent watch. I've never been disappointed truly before with any Amazfit watch. This one seems to be on the higher end. This is definitely one of of their flagship models but it does lack some features you're gonna to have to decide what's important to you so stay tuned I will be coming back with the Amazfit GTR to do a full review once I've used it for a while I will be checking this battery life to see how well it actually does I know for example when you use GPS the battery life is much lower but that is the same with every device that has GPS so not too bothered about that so guys, that's it. I hope that's been useful for you. If you already have the Amazfit GTR, then let us know. Let us know what you think. Uh, yeah, but until then, I will see you around. Bye.